Русские оккупанты напали на мигнер на мигнер One year since the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. 100,000 refugees from Ukraine have arrived in the UK, 3,000 of whom are already in Somerset. The question now stands as to what is next for these individuals. My name is Marina. I'm from Ukraine, from Central Park. Well, I came to England a year ago. This is the story of just one family and the 12 months since their world was changed. Marina moved from Snyelakova to Somerset with her son Vlad once the invasion had begun in 2022. One night we felt the trembling of windows and doors. We didn't hear any explosions, but still it was quite scary. And we stayed in the hall in the corridor all night long and in the morning with my son we decided that we have to go and it was the right decision i believe because all this year long we've been living in peaceful atmosphere and we we live our life my parents stayed in ukraine well actually we speak on the phone every day they have adopted they are used to the war if it's possible and try to live their life. Firstly, we heard about that uh, visa, Homes for Ukraine, and found our sponsors on Facebook. My son insisted to look for a sponsor. Uh, I was scared, actually. You didn't know what to do next. So when I arrived to the border, I couldn't imagine what is my next step. But then I started asking people, call my acquaintances in Poland, asking volunteers. I met an English volunteer who helped me to get to Somerset. He lives in Somerset too. And we felt a bit more comfortable as there is a person who helps, who takes us straight to our sponsor's doors. I had been living with my host for three months, then I managed to find a flat for rent. But we keep in touch, yeah, and well, I believe, I, uh, I believe this is my family too in here. I'm very grateful to them because they accommodated us with open heart and we felt as at home. Many British volunteers stepped up to assist in transporting refugees and giving them resources. But we are going to be focusing on one volunteer in particular. I don't cry as a, as a general rule. Um, it's not a rule. I just, I just tend to not. And I was openly crying out there, like just driving through and being like, I can't believe what I've just seen. There is literally thousands of women carrying babies. So my name's Gareth Witt, I'm um, 36 years old and I run a restaurant in uh, Yeovil called Cow and Apple. Gareth is an ex-Royal Navy Marine who raised an exponential amount of money to assist Ukrainians and help them move out of the country safely. On day six of the war we did a, a bit of a post from the restaurant's profile on Facebook which just went crazy and we had loads of aid dropped off, literally bags and bags and bags of aid. The two of us left on the Sunday um, and drove until the Tuesday where we arrived in Medica in Poland. From there, obviously, it was just sort of carnage. The emotions are running really high. There's hardly anyone there to help out, but there's obviously thousands of Ukrainians trying to flee Ukraine. It was all, there was no charities at all. It was all just mostly volunteers. There was, a, I say no charities, there was no big charities. World Food Kitchen were there, um, and they, so they were providing food, but no, no physical sort of big presence of charities at all. I think it was the first 
trip I did, there was like a seven hour queue to, of standing people waiting to come through. They were queuing in freezing cold temperatures because there's no cover or anything. And then it was a case of the next morning we heard someone died in the queue. Whilst trying to find hotels in Poland that would house refugees, Gareth came across Marina and her son Vlad. We then ended up seeing Marina and Vlad and just got chatting to them. They just got their visa, I think, at the time. It just so happened that we were flying back and I said to them, well, I can assist you with that. Again, I use the word fate, but it, was, it felt like that at the time. I have a recurrent dream at night. I'm, I'm coming home. Danilo Shramenko and I'm a co-founder of company and performer and also producer. The hooligan art community started devising their bunker cabaret performances in Ukraine after the war had begun. They used their stories and experiences as inspiration for their shows. This modern culture is very cool because it's all young people, very experiment, very brave and very truthful somehow. And it was a pleasure to live in Kyiv because Kyiv is like heart of this culture somehow. They have been described as a kaleidoscope of dance, drama and song, born in the bomb shelters of Kiev. Start to create material from the small bomb shelter, which was also very good and comfortable, like it was like just underground space for rehearsal. So, and we from Kiev send the video material to, uh, to Europe, but our, my personal impulse was to just to speak to Western audience. I stay in Kyiv from the first day. You really understand the, your, uh, your value of life. Your house now could be destroyed and you have only your back, for example. I had my back. I know that the only reason, only value is a people, connection with people. It just gives this opportunity to understand something about myself. People everywhere around UK was very open, very cool. And like kind of the same in this kind of openness and supportive. Uh, everybody support us very much. Like we don't have very big support from government, like for money, like we apply for some things, but uh, all time you feel support from people. I think the show is good and it works very good to people. Somehow we have all after show this time when we can speak and chat. And like we are real Ukrainians from Ukraine here on the stage. It's not news, it's not TV picture. And something this physical uh, presence give a lot to people, just physical presence and okay, with, uh, we use art as an instrument to speak and it's work. So how do you feel about seeing Marine again after a year? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, th I, I think I'm a little bit nervous as well, but um, yeah, I think it's going to be really nice to sort of just say hello. Um, Hopefully convince her to come down to the restaurant at some point and, and uh, bring Vlad along and see, see what happens. Good. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. Wow. Wow. Obviously we didn't, we didn't know each other for very long. It was just a significant situation. It was an emotional time for me, but I can't even begin to imagine what it was like for Marina. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, <laughs> more settled than I think I, I could have imagined, you know? Really, really grateful that our trip was easy, thanks to you. Yeah, we didn't worry about anything. Wow. Just for tubes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>